Welcome to the PLZ Soccer Show. I'm <coughs> Peter Martin. Alan Ruff is alongside me. We're looking back over the weekend's action north and south of the border. Uh, no doubt about the main talking point in Scotland. It was Motherwell nil, Celtic nil. The big talking point, the red card for Cedric Kipri. Motherwell <coughs> are actually going to appeal it. No surprise here. I thought it was a harsh one, Ruffy. I cannot believe Craig Thompson sent him off. Spoiled the game. He got it wrong in my book. Yeah, I think he got it wrong as well. You're right, he did spoil the game, uh, particularly for Motherwell. I thought Motherwell were playing particularly well. The, the upper hand in the first half, they were the one that were creating the chances. So I can see why the, the Motherwell manager is upset because obviously the second half he has to sit back and try and see out the game. But they still created some chances, but I think the only credit goes to Motherwell for getting the point at the end of the day. Yeah, you were a goalkeeper. There were some good saves from <coughs> Trevor Carson and uh, I thought from Scott Bain as well. Yeah, both of them. Scott Bain had a couple of good saves early on. Uh, one in particular was a pile driver. I think it was from Tate. Uh, and after that, obviously, Carson was the man who kept uh, Celtic out. But it was, uh, I thought it was a poor performance for Celtic. I, th I think, obviously, last week we were all talking about Graham Murphy, you know, not getting... Uh, shifting his team about going down when they went down to what was it 10 men with about 30 minutes to go Brendan Rodgers had 45 minutes to get on top of Motherwell but he just couldn't do it yep in the end nil nil I, I <coughs> thought Stephen Robinson came out of it with uh, you know great pride in his players they were well worthy of the point because they defended well with 10 men for a long period of time well it just shows you how everything's going well for them every, every player is fighting for each other you could see I think it was a latch ditch tackle and, and Scott Sinclair just summed up the whole of the Motherwell defence that uh, not to let the ball go in the back of the net and, and at the end of the 90 minutes I think they were the, the team that took all the plaudits. Yep, you can give us your view on that at PLZ Soccer on Twitter, facebook.com forward slash PLZ Soccer, elsewhere 24 hours earlier to be exact. It was Kilmarnock who defeated Rangers at home. That's four wins out of eight against Rangers, so they have a good track record. Steve Clark getting all the plaudits, uh, Ruffy. And in the end, Chris Boyd, the old Ranger, comes up to score one against his old teammates. Yeah, typical Chris Boyd in the right place at the right time. I thought the Rangers goalkeeper had a, made a good save, uh, but unfortunately it just went right to him. It actually hit off him rather than him putting it in, but you have to be in the right place to... For a striker to do that but again you know it was a disappointing home display from Rangers I think everybody's now doubting whether this uh, block of players are any different from the last block because they don't seem to be able to handle playing at home in front of that large crowd there's too many of them going to a shell yeah do you think Chris Boyd should feel slightly aggrieved he's not involved in the Scotland squad I ask you that question on the basis that I don't think uh, Chris is at the point now where he should be thinking about Scotland he scored 20 goals he'll be in the running for player of the year but you know Scotland squad I think that's beyond him now yeah I think so as well and I think Chris is the first to admit it uh, I think when you go up to that level I think this uh, one striker up front for Scotland's got a massive job to play you know, he's got to run most of the channels, he's got to make himself available. It's a very taxing job. I think maybe Chris has seen that he's done it, been it and done it again. Yeah. Oh. You know, and I think he's, he's he just doesn't want to do it again. Yeah, I wish Ruffy could say been it, seen it and done it, but he'll get there in the end. Um, listen, uh, Graham Murty, mm -hmm. You know, he's told uh, the fans and the players that they've got to keep believing uh, they're in a real battle now with Aberdeen. If Aberdeen win their game in hand, uh, you know, there'll be a point ahead of them in this race for second. Yes, they certainly will. And I still don't think they're firing on all cylinders either. I don't think it was that convincing at the weekend. But it was three points uh, and obviously in a Scottish Cup semi-final. So they've got a lot to play for and the men momentum seems to be with them. Yep, you can uh, get involved at PLZ Soccer on Twitter, <coughs> facebook.com forward slash PLZ Soccer. So the Dons get the win. Graham Shaney scores the goal. Um, he's one of those players that I think, again, too many midfielders that we have at our disposal, Ruffy. So uh, I know he'd love to play for Scotland, but he's just not getting the call at the moment. Do you have a bit of sympathy for him? Yeah, I think you have to have a bit of sympathy. It'd be nice if Alec had maybe found a place to be in the squad. I think Alec announced 28 players. It'd be nice for players like that to get a wee introduction. It doesn't necessarily have to play, but get the experience of going away with the national side for because for the last two or three seasons, he's been absolutely superb. Yeah, Derek McInnes reckons that Scott McKenna's the best centre-half in Scotland at the moment. I, I hope that is mm -hmm. the case. Um, I hope Derek can make him an even better centre-half and Alex McLeish gets the benefit. Yeah, uh, I think it's a big step up for the lad. This is his first full season 
uh, playing with Aberdeen and to go right into a national side is a massive step. So yep, I, I hope he's one of the players that can make that step because we really, really do need centre halves. Yep. Okay. Uh, we've discussed all three games there. As far as the bottom end of the table is concerned, Ross County two, Hamilton two. I'm not too sure uh, that's what Ross County were looking for, but they did have to come back from two one down to snatch the draw. Yeah, and I think both teams will take the point. You know, obviously Ross County will turn it to this is the beginning of a charge from us picking up the point. Hamilton are playing pretty low key and quite rightly so. But if Hamilton keep continuing to pick up points, particularly away from home, again they'll be out of that relegation zone. Okay, uh, what about Hearts? Three nothing against your old side, Partick Thistle. It's not looking good for the Jags. No, no it's not. You know, the, the three goals or well, two in particular could have been prevented. The first one was an excellent goal. Partick Thistle had chances during that game. Obviously, Connor Salmon not not playing, and, and they have got two really hard away games coming up. I think the last game of the, the, the 33 is Kilmarnock at home. So it just shows you that home game could, could mean so much to Partick Thistle. Yeah, are you changing your mind now on who you think is going to be relegated and who's going to be in the playoff position, Ruffy? Because I'm looking at Ross County, I don't think they can save themselves. I might mm -hmm. be proved wrong, mm -hmm. um, but uh, Dundee or Partick Thistle, I, I can't pick between the two of them now. I think yeah. Hamilton have managed to yeah. defy the odds once again. Yeah, I mean, I think once it comes to the split, I think uh, Hamilton would have to have a, di a disaster split, you know, to get pulled back down there. But Partick this one Dundee will believe that they can beat each other in this split and it just shows you how important it's going to be to get three home games and two away. Okay, as you can see over the weekend, uh, some interesting results. You can give us your view on your favourite team or anything that's bugging you uh, across the Premiership in Scotland. As far as the Premiership in England is concerned, uh, there's only four games on due to the FA Cup as well, Ruffy. Uh, but one man that stole the show was Mo Salah. He was magnificent against Watford. Uh, I think it's between him and De Bruyne now for Player of the Year. Yeah, I think these two will be uh, running for that one. You know, he's been absolutely sensational this year. Some of the goals he's been scoring, uh, he seems to be all over the place. And again, being a good striker in the right place at the right time. So yeah, I think you're right, but I, I still think De Bruyne will just edge that one. Yeah, just out of curiosity, Ruffy, am I being unkind to Harry Kane and Sergio Aguero? I'm a big Aguero mm -hmm. fan. No, I think they'll be the. I think that will be the four. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Ericsson sort of a squeezes one of them out because I think he's had a good season as well. But no, the the four of them are absolutely superb. It might go against Kane being out injured. We don't know how quickly he's going to come back. So the the guys that are actually playing week in week out the now and scoring goals will be the guys that everybody's talking about. Yeah, OK. As far as the FA Cup's concerned, <coughs> it was easy enough for Tottenham Hotspur against Swansea. Uh, Man United uh, managed to see off uh, Brighton in that game. Uh, ahead of that game as well, Ruffy, Jose Mourinho's had a few problems with the press. Uh, he's been criticising some of his players. I think if you were uh, if you were a Man United player and you get into that dressing room, I think <laughs> Nemanja Matic is the only man who's the teacher's pet at the moment. Yeah, and he's obviously giving them all a shake. And uh, it's amazing when a manager doesn't name the players that he's talking about. Everybody's all looking at each other going, is he talking about me? Is he talking about you? So that, he'll be doing that to get a response. I think he got some kind of response. For, but for me, I don't think Man United are firing on all cylinders just now. I thought Brighton had a few chances to get a draw out of that game. Yeah, Chelsea defeated Leicester City. <coughs> Which is the greater need? Chelsea's to win something to salvage their season or Man United? Well, I think both of them, Peter. I think both of them will get a set of supporters. Uh, both managers will be critical if they don't win anything this year. So whichever one wins it, you know, I'll get the fans back on their side. OK, Southampton managed to beat Wigan. <coughs> I don't see Southampton winning the Cup. No, neither do I. Uh, I think the other three have got so much to play for. Uh, I think Southampton will give them a good game, but it just shows you where they are in the league. You would think in a one-off game they wouldn't be able to compete with these three. OK, uh, coming up this week, it's international <coughs> football that takes centre stage. Alex McLeish has got the squad together for the first time today, Rafi. Uh, he's drafted in uh, Jack Henry. Maybe a couple of people might feel a little myth that they mm -hmm. didn't get the call. Christoph Berra, uh, for one, uh, hasn't been called up. Should he feel uh, a little aggrieved that he's maybe looking mm -hmm. to the younger players? Yeah, I think he will. But I mean, I, I was reading that Alec McLeish has actually phoned him and, and chatted to him about it and said, look, I know exactly what you can do. I want to see what others can do. What he got to get his head round is, you know, Grant Hanley's obviously in there and Martin was in there as well. So I'm sure Alec McLeish knows what they can do as well. So. 
If I was Christo Berra, I would be having a wee bit of scratch in my head about that one. Yeah, OK. Uh, it's all about opinions. Give us yours <coughs> at PLZ Soccer on Twitter, facebook.com forward slash PLZ Soccer. Remember, you can download the app now on Google and in the App Store as well. You'll get all the latest news right across European football and world football as well. Uh, close attention to the English League and the Scottish Leagues too on the PLZ app. There'll be competitions coming soon and of course you can get involved right down to the fact of hitting the video reporter and giving us your view on your favourite team and what's irking you about uh, football in general. You can record a video and it will be used on this show in the future. So uh, you can do that on the app. You can stay right up to date on the website www.plzsoccer.com Hopefully you'll tune in tomorrow. We'll have Simon Donnelly alongside us here on the PLZ Soccer Show. From Ruffy and myself, thanks for watching. Thank you.